we're leaving high school with a uh with lust we're leaving high school with uh, a bad idea or view of relationships and we're also leaving high school with a sporadic curiosity for porn great right I'm What's up? It's Kiantane with another video. If you guys have not already subscribed to the channel on the tour, what the flip are you doing? So today I'm just going to talk to you guys about a little bit of my lust, masturbation, boyfriend, all of that. I'm gonna be real transparent with you guys. The first guy I ever talked to was in high school. Uh, well, yeah, like the first guy that actually seemed to like me or whatever, seemed to reciprocate any energy was in the 10th grade. And uh, we were like on and off for like two years until I kind of just, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I went back, you know what I'm saying? I went up, you feel me? I just stopped talking to him, you feel me? But no, I didn't get a lot of attention from, from guys um, until I got to high school. Um, and that was the first guy to actually give me some reciprocated from what looked to be reciprocated energy. So I gave him my energy and I gave him all of it. So from that point on, it became a physical thing. He, I think that's when I started to realize, dang, like I kind of like athletes or dang, I kind of like them to be a little tall, you know what I'm saying? I kind of like them a little big. He was that, he, he was a very handsome guy. Um, but he just wasn't right, yo. We did not have sex, uh, but he was my first kiss. Uh, you know, that was it. And oh, we did a lot of. Anyways, that's not the point. He distracted me. Like he was my first experience of what it's like to be in a relationship, or so what I thought was a relationship. And from that point on, um, there was about, ooh, yo, know, there were some dudes. Just a lot of me was lost. A lot of my focus was focused on these guys. Um, class became oh well the next class i'll see this person so i need to be preparing myself for when i go to this period instead of what home what homework did i have last night did i do it did i you know just my whole focus my whole central point of going to school became what let me see what it's like to see this guy my expectations have began to skyrocket because i'm like well this might blow my mind so what's tomorrow gonna be like and i had formed these ideas and what the future could be like of me being with these people but one thing i never got from them was commitment i think that's where um high school is definitely where my uh less formed my uh strong what a k strong strong attraction for uh men grew uh, or boys per se uh, in height the physical had begun to outweigh the things that it mattered that mattered so how does he treat you does he open my door how does he speak to me does he do his homework you know stuff like that began to just not matter and as long as he was six five as long as he was chocolate or he could be brown he could be anything really and as long as he played a sport he was perfect and that's all that mattered so i think that's where that mindset developed so porn um mind you in high school i never had sex or anything like that so we're just gonna be honest with each other i had a best friend who was sexually active and she was in a relationship she was always in relationships um so me being her best friend i experienced what she was experiencing the aftermath more, per se like i was i used to say i'm like her second boyfriend because it was like i was in a relationship with her too because a lot of the things that she was experiencing within her relationship they would fall back on me and i would get the backlash from that instead of him getting the backlash the guy she was with had porn videos from the girl that he left to be with my best friend. So they would make porn videos and stuff like that. And she, I guess, sent herself those videos after she was looking through his phone. And I think she sent them to me, I can't remember why. But I remembered that she had sent me those videos from that day. And I think it was a random day and I was curious. So I looked up the videos and I would just watch the videos. So that's where my porn watching began. So I say that probably happened around 10th or 11th grade, probably 10th grade when I started to watch porn. So when I would watch that stuff, uh, it would be very uh, sporadic. It could be every three months, maybe every six months. Like it wasn't a habit, but it was something that I would just do when I was just, I guess when I was horny, I guess that's what you want to call it. We're leaving high school with a, uh, with lust. We're leaving high school with uh, a bad idea or view of relationships. And we're also leaving high school with a sporadic curiosity for porn. Great, right? 
I get to college and I'm designing a relationship. I, first of all, I always want to be in one. I'm ready, y'all. Like, I'm talking about, I'm looking up the basketball roster. Let's not talk about the shirt. I think that the shirt has, has character. I think that it means something. I think that the shirt should not be your main focus as you're watching this video. I would go find their handles on Instagram and DM them or like a few of their pictures to get their attention. And I'm not gonna lie to you, 80% of the time it worked. 80% of the time they would respond and I would get what I wanted. Just a conversation or whatever, just to be able to say, I, you know, I pulled this athlete. But um, that's how far gone I was. That's how consumed I was in uh, these guys giving me attention, seeking validation, um, and even on social media. <sighs> just like I was attached to like the like like um are they gonna tell me I knew that I was cute I knew I was you know it it meant more for them to tell me it meant more for them to uh ask for my number or flirt with me or seem to like me and all that stuff and then I would try to you know I always had Christian beliefs I was always a Christian however um I didn't include God in a lot of areas of my life so I guess you could say I was lukewarm hmm, I guess so I entered like I said I entered into high into college uh, with the desire for a relationship um and i got one i got one that next that spring semester oh it's gonna get juicy okay when i went to my second school it was so weird for me because i was so used to having that constant validation constant attention from guys that none of the guys on the basketball team none of them was trying to talk to me and i'm just like why aren't y'all trying to talk to me like, you get so used to that um constant validation constant attention that when it's drawn when it's taken away it's just like <laughs> Why y'all not trying to talk to me, you feel me? So I'm spring semester. I meet this guy. Super cool. He was cute at the time. Um, he was uh, very, from what it seemed to be intentional with the way he was pursuing me. Long story short, um, we hit it all very fast. I think we talked for maybe two weeks. He asked me to be his girlfriend the third week. We dated for two months. That was it. Background. The only important part of this, me telling you that story, is what? As a result of that relationship what did i have to deal with so as a result of that relationship i dealt with a lot of <laughs> confusion y'all like that whole relationship was so confusing one thing i knew going into and leaving the relationship i knew that god did not want me to be with that guy um just by the signs just by the feeling that i got from just dating him um there's a certain piece that you you need when you are looking or seeking for god's validation and it was not there y'all it was permissible for me to talk to him and waste time and because i knew that eventually we would split ways and uh i would go to montgomery and he would go to memphis and i wouldn't see him anymore right uh he was the first guy that i ever uh spent the night with he was the first guy that i uh cuddled with uh made out with y'all i was first guy that i actually compromised myself so much so that i was just like dang like after i reflected on that relationship i was like i really compromised myself to the point where i, I said that i would never do that and i did um we never had oral sex or anything like that uh but we did like a little dry dry fingering i guess i don't know if that's a thing but that's what happened that was probably the worst thing that happened with us y'all was bad okay as someone who's saying that saving themselves for marriage i compromised myself extremely i just think as a result of all the physical touching that we were doing we would literally oh yeah we would spend hours just cuddling we would spend hours just napping all day and sometimes it would even be where he would have his shirt off and you know i still have my clothes on but it's still that skin to skin contact all of that opened my eyes to a whole nother world because i had never ever opened myself up in that way i was never that vulnerable with anybody in a physical way before so leaving that relationship and us not us going from touching and hugging and kissing every day to me not seeing him was like okay so now it's time to find something to do i think one night i was just experimenting and i think i just started uh fingering myself to be honest with y'all um that's where it began y'all uh it began it became a seldom thing it became a sometimes thing it became an often thing and i think for a period it became an every other day thing it didn't take me long to realize that there was that was an issue because that's something i didn't struggle with before and i think that when we put situ we put ourselves in situations and we give ourselves problems and open ourselves up to problems that were never meant to be our problem you feel me in the moment me knowing that we were gonna the relationship was only gonna be temporary i didn't know that i was gonna be struggling with masturbation for almost a year after that you feel me so it's just like like we don't factor in the things 
consequences of our actions you know yes the god god has removed me from that relationship um i've learned things about my own life and you know god still has his hand on me however i need his a little bit of extra help to break that masturbation spirit spirit of masturbation off of me the spirit of lust off of me the spirit of physical just need like just all of that so not only was did i start to struggle with masturbation I struggle heavily with thoughts like sexual thoughts y'all i still struggle with that jump today because of just gears of doing relationships my own way or situationships and just engaging in that guys it's completely misconstrued completely demolished my outlook on what a relationship really is and what it's supposed to actually be like you know for me i think i asked myself this a couple of months ago i was like i said kiana what is it that you're most looking forward to in marriage or relationship and all i could tell you or all i could think about was something the physical aspect of relationships that's when i realized dang like i have completely ruined what it is what the meaning of a relationship really is and um that's when i figured out or realized i needed to do some work I needed to ask God to help me. I brought it over into this year because it's going to be 2023. So I've struggled with masturbation pretty much all of this year. The thing about it is that I would go on these masturbation hiatuses. Maybe from May to uh, September, I would masturbate. Then one day I would just masturbate and I would start over. I think I've done that twice. I've relapsed twice. One thing my ministry leader told me was that don't think that your masturbation is gone. He said, it's just taking a nap. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I genuinely thought that my masturbation had dipped thought I wasn't gonna deal with it anymore because it had been so long it was indeed taking a nap it was taking a little a little quick power nap you feel me so I think a couple months after that I ended up masturbating masturbation has been something that has I don't want to say a chokehold because that junk is it, it's not finna have me my whole life y'all I'm not even gonna say that junk like it's been a challenge I will definitely tell you it's been a challenge you know how you do something for so long when you engage in situationships, cuddling, touching, rubbing, uh, acting like we dating, but we're not really dating. That stuff literally messes up what God intends for relationships and things to work. So it's like, I'm literally having to break that and teach myself or allow God to teach me and show me uh, through videos, through the word, through prayer, through all those things, what a real relationship entails, what a real relationship will look like and what to really expect when it comes to marriage. I just having to be honest with myself like every time you masturbate and you relapse i hope you don't relapse but if you do it's not gonna always be a reason my thing was i would i'm a very analytical person i'm very observant i like the reasons and stuff and understand why things happen and when it came to my masturbation i'm just like okay well this time i masturbated i know it was because i was listening to this music i was listening to this or i watched this but the last time i relapsed which was like less than a month ago i was listening to music and but i don't really watch nothing for real crazy but I'm very, uh, now that I've found that me listening to sexual music on a higher level does in fact influence me sexually, uh, lessen the amount that I listen to. So I don't feel like that was a reason why I, I relapsed at that point. I just genuinely didn't have any reason. It was just because I genuinely just wanted to have sex and I genuinely couldn't do it. So I genuinely just felt like masturbating. Like there's just no reason for it. I will say that, um, the day before I relapsed, um, I had a drink the night so I want to say I guess that night so or whenever I woke up that morning I remembered that I had a dream about me not going to ransom in the dream it had predicted that I did nothing I had not engaged in anything regarding ransom from Sunday to Monday and usually on Sundays background we have uh, leadership meetings or you know just meetings to talk about what we're going to do how to plan better for a ransom on Monday on Mondays for ransom we pass out flyers and then they're actually ransom so in the dream, I literally remember not doing any of that stuff. I didn't do any of those events. I found that very peculiar. So I listened. And for some reason, y'all, it was like a when I got, I think I had driven back home or something like that. And once I got back from being home, it was like this strong desire to not be around anybody, y'all. It was like an isolation period. I didn't want to be around nobody. I didn't want to talk to nobody out there. I just want to be in my room, be on TikTok and just lay in a bed. Like, that's just how it was. It rolled over to the next day. The next day, earlier that morning, I was like, mm, I had a dream that I, went, I didn't go to ransom today. I think one of my friends was like, well, maybe that's the song you should go. And I was just like, yeah. But as the day went on, the less and less I wanted to go to ransom. Long story short, I had a friend call me. She was like, hey, you're on my heart. Um, and I told her I had a dream about not going. She was like, well, maybe that's a guy telling you that you should go. She was like, usually when you have dreams like that, that means you should go. Like, you feel me? 
but I did not go. I didn't go to anything. I isolated myself that day. The next day, y'all, uh, midday, worship, prayed that morning. Midday, I felt like having sex. Came out of nowhere. Like, the blue sky, okay? And I masturbated, and I relapsed after, I want to say, seven months. I say all of that to say, my friend was just saying, like, those times are when you need to go the most. Like, especially when it's something of God, like, and it was such a good, uh, interesting perspective on how she explained it. She was just saying, things that are good, and we're being influenced to not go we should be going you feel me like it's a reason why i'm i'm being influenced or i don't know i guess the enemy is trying to convince me not to go and do what i usually do because every other monday every other sunday wrestle wrestle straight wrestle like that's it's no it's a non-negotiable type thing it's inevitable that i would go to ransom but this particular sunday and monday the enemy decides to test and see if what am i really gonna do and the thing about that is I believe that had I gone to ransom that Monday, I would have, I would not have masturbated that Tuesday. Um, it's a thing that I can put in my back pocket and remember that those times where I feel like the enemy is trying to convince me to not go do the things that will potentially save me or, uh, I guess, help me. That's when I need to go and do it. Some days you don't feel like doing certain things, but I think those are the times where we need to push ourselves to do those things. Like it's called discipline. Uh, sometimes motivation won't be there. Motivation will not be there. Uh, as far as what are we doing to move forward with our lust, uh, redirecting our idea of relationships and marriage and uh, uh, what is it? All that stuff is really just submitting myself to Christ more. Um, I will say this year, I've submitted myself to God the most I have ever in my life. And I've seen God move in ways that I, unimaginable ways. However, I do know and think that there is work to be done and i feel that i need to be most especially intentional with how i submit myself to god um because you know with some of the things god has told me i begin to idolize those things and it's become a very big part of my world not that god wouldn't want those things to become an important part of my world but it's almost become so much so much bigger that god has become that God has been put here and the thing he's told me about has been put here. So basically, like I said, idolatry and I've had to fast uh, because my thoughts began to, guys, my thoughts were literally like whirlwind of a hot mess. Like I needed something to help recenter my minds, recenter my thoughts. And honestly, that fast, praise the Lord, y'all. The fast has helped my thoughts tremendously. Like um, it was almost, I wouldn't say it was something I noticed um, immediately, but I will say this week I've seen my thoughts become like so much more calm. Um, none but the Lord himself, y'all. I'm just so excited to finally be able to have a clear mind, finally be able to just be like, I'm focusing on God right now, focusing on Jesus. And guys, I can already see the enemy is... You working, y'all. Sometimes uh, the enemy working can seem to outweigh God's working or God's doing. I think those are the times where we need to talk to God the most. We need to get our word the most. Um, because like I told you, um, just like I told you guys that uh, I struggle with lusting or I struggled with uh, uh, male attention and validation and stuff like that. The enemy will try to throw those things that you think that you have kind of like moved away from back at you when you are trying to make moves when you're trying to make progress progressions when you're in your growth stage to throw you back and take you off balance and it's just like give me a ch like you don't get no chances the enemy is not stopping bro like you're not gonna he's not gonna stop so it's just like it's either you give into that jump or you move forward and you work toward progression so it's so easy to get subjected into our old ways because we miss the way those old ways used to make us feel we miss the way things used to happen you know what i'm saying attention and all that great stuff but just because people who are virgins look like they're pure look like they don't struggle with nothing look like they're good that doesn't that's not always true y'all um just because i decided not to have sex doesn't make me better it just makes me more like you to be honest with you because i may not struggle with sex or intercourse but i definitely struggle with masturbation i still struggle with lust i still struggle with relationships all that junk if you guys like this video don't forget to thumbs the video up drop a comment down below share that junk um shout out to ransom 
because honestly guys uh get around community uh find you some people to talk to um get involved in your school um ministry especially if your ministry is what you're seeking find a ministry on campus um or wherever you are on a church to um give you people and fellowship with people who will be able to pick you up in those moments where you're down like like i really got people on call like when i, I already know let me tell you something I already know me wanting to masturbate is just around the corner because at this point now i know that my masturbation ain't going y'all it's just taking another nap you feel me but now i have people set in place to call when i feel like masturbating you feel me so and like something like ransom uh, or ministry or college students or people like you around to help encourage you it's so important so that we can make steps toward growth and all that great jazz if you like the video subscribe to that joint um be easy be breezy be you i'm out peace